to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Sue of Bend and Stretch with Sue. In today's video, I'll be leading you through Pilates practice using a small ball. Now this ball is inflated, it's squeezable. If you don't have a Pilates ball, you can easily uh, find or use one of a children's ball, maybe one that you find at the, the toy store, um, pretty accessible. If you don't happen to have a ball, you could even maybe have a couple of balloons around and having a spare one, just in case you burst one while you're uh, using them. But from here, we'll get started right away. And today's practice will be focusing on supine exercises. And beginning by coming onto your back, we'll just bring the ball between the, the thighs, so you wanna have it um, not between the knees, but just above that. And just taking a moment to find your neutral spine, taking a few breaths here as you make sure that your forehead and chin are in alignment. You can even place one hand on the belly, taking a deep breath in so that you can inflate all the way down into your abdomen. And as you exhale, let yourself relax the breath out through the mouth, making sure that you maintain some engagement here in the inner thighs as you exhale. So soften the grip between the knees when you, or between the legs when you inhale, let the belly inflate. When you exhale, start to drop from the pelvic floor, squeezing the inner thighs toward each other as you squeeze on the ball. So take a few more breaths like that, breathing in fully through your nose and breathing out completely through your mouth with a softened jaw. So just beginning to really feel that connection of breath and engagement of the power house, which is between the pelvic floor and the navel. As you exhale the next time, maintain that hold. So squeezing as you continue to keep the chest proud and open. Keep that squeeze in the belly. We're just going to move our breath laterally now as we breathe into the chest and the ribs. You're going to keep the engagement in your powerhouse. So no longer letting the belly rise, even though you are still continuing to breathe in fully through the nose. Filling up laterally and exhaling through the mouth. So keep that going, a few more breaths. Really focusing that constant squeeze between the inner thighs to engage the midlines of the legs. So keeping a hold in the powerhouse, we're going to release the ball, place it between the hands, bringing the legs up to tabletop, and you can keep them here, or if you are comfortable extending the legs up, you might find you have a little bit more bend in the knee if the hamstrings are tight, which is fine. But as you hold the ball right above the chest, pressing in between the palms, hold it still as you breathe in and breathe out, out as you bring the shin toward the leg, breathing in and out, out. Now, if you didn't have a, a ball or even a balloon, you could substitute this with a, a cushion perhaps, or you could even use a yoga block. And for many of the exercises, you could substitute the yoga block. Try to keep those arms and hands still as you warm up here, really concentrating on keeping that powerhouse active. Last one. Now as you bring the left leg along, we'll, bring, we'll keep the right leg lifted. As you lift the body, reaching forward, transferring the ball to your left hand and switch the legs as you switch it back again. So bring the ball over top and behind. So continuing to switch the legs as you circle the ball right behind the lifted leg. Keeping the upper abs engaged here, keeping the chin tucked as you reach through those toes and keeping yourself lifted on the bottom tips of the shoulder blades. Warming up those hips, legs, 
Give you the control of the movement, certainly feeling the load in those abdominal muscles as well. Let's finish it up right here. Bring the legs back to tabletop and release the head down. We're going to move it into some oblique work as we place the ball on the left thigh. So you want to press the ball in here, taking the right fingertips by the ear. Take a breath in and as you exhale, reach the right leg long and extend it as you place your right elbow on the ball as well. And as you bring right leg back in, we'll roll the ball over to the other side, twisting side to side. So really focusing on the control. So you wanna make sure the pelvis is staying nice and level as you alternate side to side, breathing out on effort and breathing in when you've got that little bit of an easy spot in between the really heavy load. Now, if you needed to, you could keep the legs bent and simply roll the ball from one thigh over to the other one, making it a little bit easier if that's what works best for you, or certainly when you get tired and you need a break. So let's finish it up. One more to each side. And bring it back to the center. So we're going to continue to keep some load here on the obliques. We're actually going to activate through the arms as well as we take the ball, place it on right on top of that right quadricep. Flex and activate the bicep on that right arm as you make a fist, pressing the elbow into the thigh. So you want to push thigh into the ball, push elbow into the ball and reach your left arm, right arm, left leg long. Take a breath in and exhale, lower, lift. And as you inhale, exhale as you really concentrate on maintaining that activation on both sides. Keep the breath flowing and keep the movement flowing as best as you can. So there's work going on on the right side, there's work going on on the left side as well as you keep it moving up and down, keeping the pelvis level, keep pushing that leg into the elbow, into the balloon, or into the ball, whichever prop you're using. Let's finish it up on this side. Bending the left leg, let's switch the ball over and press it. So again, flexing those muscles on the left bicep, pushing with both the leg and the arm, elevating right arm, right leg, as you continue to keep your movement flowing. So you're really gonna feel those abs working hard here. Keep your breath energizing those muscles so that you can continue to move smoothly. You can have the, le the head lifted if you want a little bit more activation for the upper abs or keeping the head resting on the floor. Keep that moving. And let's finish with the last three. And two more, keep pushing, don't lose that grip. Last one, and then both. And you can hug the knees and give yourself a little tiny bit of a release here. We're going to take the ball when you're ready and place it right between the ankles. You can have the hands right alongside the hips again. You wanna make sure you've got neutral spine. If it is too difficult for you to do or to maintain neutral spine with the legs long, the option is always to shorten your movement, your range of motion or the lever that you're using. So in this instance, we're going to be lowering the legs squeezing that ball between the ankles, keeping pelvis neutral and lifting the legs back up. Now, if long legs is a little too difficult, you could go to toe taps instead, lifting and lowering, just tapping the toes. So make sure that your legs, if you're using this option, rather than the straight legs, you wanna make sure that you're working this right from the hip creases. So you're working the powerhouse to keep the abdomen 
uh, supporting your spine and you're not bending the knee to touch the toes, but instead you're hinging from the hips the same way you do when you have the longer lever to lower. Make sure you're controlling on the way down and you are controlling on the way up as well. You're not whipping the legs back up. You're going just as slowly on the way up as you went on the way down. So you want to exercise the control the entire time. Now let's lower the legs all the way to the mat. The nice thing about using a small ball is that it just changes the exercise stimulus to some of the exercises that we do normally in our Pilates practice, but it, by using the ball, we, it really helps us to focus on the engagement of certain muscles. As we take the arms along here, we're going to roll up, but we want to press the backs of the legs into the ball, tucking the chin, perhaps just looking up at the toes, and then rolling right back down again. If this was the extent of your movement, you're still going to feel yourself really activating through those upper abdominals, through the rectus abdominis, and from here, if you want more, you're going to roll yourself all the way up, creating a little bit of a spine stretch at the top, and then carefully, slowly, rolling your way back down again. So take your time, keep those abdominals nice and strong, keep your movement control, make sure your chest also remains open. So you want to avoid collapsing into the chest. That's going to impair your ability to breathe fully so that you won't be able to get as much oxygen into the muscles that you are targeting. Nice spine stretch at the top, always feels good. Continues to really work that abdominal wall. As it strengthens, it is providing your back muscles with support, helping you to have a strong and balanced back. So let's do another two of these. So reach and roll back down. We'll do one more. And as you roll down this time, we are going to continue to press the back of the right heel, foot, ankle into the ball, elevating your left leg. So again, modify according to how tight your hamstrings are. You might want to just give them a little bit of a stretch before you begin. And as we reach through the toes, make sure your pelvis stays level. You can even have your hands here on the hip bones to ensure that. Press really firmly into the ball with your right foot. Circle in and out. Circle in and out. So you can make those circles fairly briskly. But the idea is that you want to try to keep your right leg as still as possible. Using a ball does challenge that stability somewhat. This time, pause, and let's go the other way for five circles around. Try to keep that right leg still, and that's really challenging. Last time around. And bring it back in, lower the leg, switch the ball underneath your left leg, reach through the right one. So again, reset, give yourself that little stretch if you need it, reach through those tippy toes, stay strong, reach and circle in and out, circling in and out. So make sure the whole spine stays neutral. Don't start to point your chin up to the ceiling and don't tuck the chin too much toward the collarbone. The size of the circles is going to challenge the leveling of the hips. Go the other way. Press firmly into that left foot. Try to prevent it from moving as best as you can. So it requires lots of concentration to keep the muscles engaged and keep the stillness, maintain your spinal alignment. Lots going on and bring it all the way down. As you bring the ankles 
on either side of the ball. We're going to bring the legs to a kind of a frog position. So you want to take the ball now, place it between the heels. So you're going to squeeze the ball here between the heels, keeping the knees bent and opened out to the side. So as you take an inhale here, keep that powerhouse on, exhale to reach the legs long and bring it back in. So we're going to reach, squeezing that ball between the heels and back again. So continue on. We're going to do another five of these. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine for a total of ten. And bring it back, taking the ball between the hands once again. From here, reach the legs long, take the ball, bring it up overhead. As you keep your powerhouse engaged, spine neutral, take an inhale. As you exhale, tuck the chin, start to reach forward and lifting the right leg up, a little tap toward the ankle and bring it back down. Again, inhale and exhale and tap. And alternating side to side. Breathe again. Breathing out, breathe in at the bottom, and breathe out. So alternate. So this is the same movement as our teaser preparation. Again, reminding yourself to keep those collarbones spread wide open. And let's do one more with each leg. And take it all the way down. As you inhale, on your exhale, bring the arms and the legs up. Transfer the ball to the legs. Squeeze between the ankles, lower the arms and lower the legs and lift it back up. Transfer the ball between the hands and lower, lifting and lowering. So continue, really be careful here. When you lower your arms and your legs, you want to make sure that torso is staying anchored perfectly in position. Nothing moves. So if you find that your back is about to arch more, that's the point where you want to make sure you're not going any further because you do not want to strain the back. You want to strengthen the abdominals here to support the back. But if your back starts to arch, you're going to put undue pressure on it and you're going to create some strain and that's not what we want to do. We want to achieve more strength. And as we bring the ball between the hands, this time pause, and we're going to lift and place the ball between the ankles, hold it there for teaser, and lower all the way back down again. Take the breath in, exhale, reach and reach for those ankles, and come on back again. Breathe in, and breathe out. Inhale, and exhale. Let's do another two. Lots of control, lots of power and strength. Last one, hold it here, hold it, hold it, hold it. And release it down. Come on all the way back to seated. And that concludes our Pilates small ball practice in a supine practice. So I've got plenty more options for you. We can do this in the different variations with our body different positions. So I'd be happy to bring more of those to you. Let me know what you thought and let me know what you'd like to see. So I'd like to thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you for your time, I really appreciate it. Give me one of these if you liked it and make sure that you subscribe, share the link with your friends and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you'll know when I upload new content and you can check it out. 
and check me out in the next video. Namaste. Thank you.